Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to our lessons in General Mathematics, Quarter 2, Module 1. So we are in Lesson 1. Our topic is Illustrating Simple and Compound Interest. What is interest? In the financial concept, the ability to effectively manage one's finances is essential to one's financial survival. We work or do business to earn a living. From this, we use the money we earn to buy goods and services that will satisfy our needs, wants, and demands. Also, we use the money to deposit it to banks or investment companies to grow or just keep them safely at our houses as our savings to realize our plans in the future and as emergency funds. Thus, there is a need to manage one's finances intelligently. Otherwise, we borrow money from a person, the banks, or any lending institutions. When we do this, a debt is made. We need to pay back the money originally borrowed and also the additional fee charged for the use of the money. That is called the interest. So interest may be the fee we need to pay for the use of money or an income from invested capital. So what is the meaning of interest? Interest is charged as a percent of the principal for a different period of time. Now let's have the definition of terms. So first we have the lender or creditor. It is a person or institution who invests the money or makes the funds available. Next is borrower. A person or institution who owes the money or avails of the funds from the lender. So ito yung nanghihiram ng pera or nangungutang. Origin or loan date. This is the date on which money is received by the borrower. So that is the origin or the loan date on which money is received by the borrower. Repayment date or maturity. So a date on which the money borrowed or loan is to be completely repaid. Now we have time or term. That is small letter T. Amount of time in years the money is borrowed or invested or length of time between the origin and maturity dates. The principal that is in capital letter P, amount of money borrowed or invested on the origin date. Next is the rate or the small letter R. It is an annual rate usually in percent charged by the lender or rate of increase of the investment. Next is interest or capital letter I, amount paid or earned for the use of money. And then we have the simple interest that is capital letter I and small letter S, I, S. The simple interest is interest that is computed on the principal and then added to it. So for example, we have here the formula is the Simple interest is equivalent to the principal times the rate times time. For the maturity value or future value, we have the capital letter F. That is the amount after T years. Okay, so in any number of years that the lender receives from the borrower on the maturity date. So that is the maturity value or future value. Next, we have the simple interest or capital IS. Compound interest, that is capital I and smaller letter C. IC or compound interest. Interest is computed on the principal and also on the accumulated past interest. That is, the compound interest is equivalent to the future value minus the principal. If an amount P is invested at an interest rate R compounded annually, then the investment will increase to a value of A or the future value. At the end of T years, it is modeled by the equation 
Okay, our A or the future value is equivalent to the principal multiplied by 1, quantity 1 plus the R or the rate raised to T. Okay, so that is the future value formula. Now, the conversion period or smaller m, it is the number of times in a year, in a year, the interest will be compounded. For example, we have annually. For the annually, the conversion period of or the number of times in a year is m is equivalent to 1 because that is annually. For the semi-annually, that is m is equivalent to 2. So, 6 months. So, you have twice, no? Twice, the two periods. For the quarterly, M is equivalent to four. So a year is divided into four. And then, or that is every three months. And monthly, we have M is equivalent to 12. That is every month. The period is every month. Now, simple interest versus compound interest. So we have here an illustration of simple and compound interest. So in a simple interest, if, uh, the interest on principal only. So, for example, you invested 200 pesos with a rate of 3% for two years. So, in the year one, you have 6 pesos. In the year two, the interest is also 6 pesos. And the total interest for two years is 12 pesos. Now, in the compound interest here, the interest on principal and interest previously earned. Okay, so for example, you have 200 pesos invested with a rate of 3% for two years. So if it is compound interest, in the year one, the interest is 6%. In the year two, so the 200 plus the 6 pesos in the year one interest, so this is equivalent to 206 times the 3% of this one. So 206 times 3%, you have... 6.18 okay so for from year one the interest is six pesos and in the year two you have 6.18 so for two years the total interest is so six plus 6.18 you have 12.18 for two years if it is compound interest okay so so that is the difference between the simple and compound interest simple interest Simple interest paid or received over a certain period is a fixed percentage of the principal amount that was borrowed or lent. So while the compound interest accrues and is added to the accumulated interest of previous periods, so borrowers must pay interest on interest as well as principal. So what is the difference between simple and compound interest? Now we have here simple interest and compound interest so the table on the right shows the difference of simple and compound interest so a small percentage of principal as agreed between the lender and the borrower while in the compound interest a small percentage of principal and a massed simple interest as mutually agreed for the simple interest steady wealth growth and compound interest Wealth growth increases as a higher pace due to compounding. For the simple interest, we have less returns compared to compound interest. While in compound interest, higher returns compared to simple interest. Then we have simple interest. Wealth growth is comparatively lower. While in compound interest, wealth accumulation will be at a higher rate. In simple interest, Principal never changes with increased tenure and compound interest. Principal increases as interest compounds and gets added to it. And for the formula, in a simple interest, you have easy to calculate using the formula IS or the simple interest is equivalent to the principal times rate times time. Or IS is equivalent to P times R times T. While in the compound interest, difficult to calculate using the formula we have the ic is equivalent to f minus p or the compound interest is equivalent to the future value minus the principal or 
A is equivalent to P multiplied by quantity 1 plus R uh, raised to T. R is for rate and T is for that time. Okay, so, so we have here the sample problem. Okay, try this one. Activity 1. Aldi wants to deposit her money, that is 1000 in a savings account. Two banks offer 6% interest per year. Complete the tables below and help her which banks to choose. Okay, for the bank A, simple interest. Complete the first table that show balance after 10 years with simple interest. Okay, so we have here the note. To get the yearly interest, get the product of the rate and the principal. So converting the rate 6% to decimal form, we get 0 0.06. So that's 0 0.06 multiplied by 1,000 pesos, that is equivalent to 60. So hence, the yearly interest is 60. So we have here the example for the first and second year other. So for the first year, the principal is 1,000. The yearly interest is 60 because that is 1,000 times 0 0.06 uh, or 6% of 1,000 is 60. That is for the first year interest. So the balance at the end of the year, the 1,000 becomes 1,060. For the second year, another 6%, which is 60, 60 pesos. So 1,060 plus 60. So it equal to 1,120. Now for the third year, so you are going to write this, uh, write 1,000 here, then the yearly interest, which is 60 pesos. So from 60, 1,120 plus 60, you will get 1,180. So you have to complete this uh, table. Okay, let's proceed to the bank B, compound interest. So you're going to complete the second table that shows the balance after 10 years with interest that is compounded annually. So number one here, we have 1,000 annual interest so it is compounded or compound interest so that is 1000 for the first year times 0 0.06 since it is six percent yearly so that is equivalent to 60. so six percent of 1000 is 60 pesos so the balance at the end of the year is 1000 plus 60 is 1060 for the first year now for the second year so instead of writing 1000 here for the year two all you have to do is to copy the balance in the previous year which is 1060 so the 1060 multiplied by the six percent so kukunin natin yung six percent from 1060 so you have 63.60 okay the 63.60 we will add that from the balance last or from the previous year so 1060 plus 63.60 that is equivalent to 1123.60. So for the third year, so what is the principal amount now? That is 1123.60. So you have to write here 1123.60 for the third year. Then proceed to uh multiply or get the uh, the six percent of 1023.60 for the annual interest okay and then you're going to write here the balance at the end of the year and so on and so forth so you are going to complete this table so after completing the table what are you going to do is to compare the two banks which bank gives the greater balance so you're going to write which bank gives the greater balance here the bank a or bank b for number two, which bank should Aldi choose and why? Okay, so you're going to answer that to question after completing that table. Okay, thank you so much. And that ends our lessons for today. I hope you have learned something. Goodbye, everyone.